Hi Virgo, welcome to your October 2018 Astro Update. It's Raina here and in October Virgo, this is really good for money because the sun starts off the month in your second house of earned income and the, there's going to be like a Venus retrograde in this house. At the beginning of the month, while the sun is in that second house, Venus is in the third house in the sign of Scorpio. And the third house is the house of communication, teaching and learning, the internet and things like that. So there could be some kind of money situation happening at the time of that retrograde that causes you to kind of like have to go back and review things because retrogrades are all about going back. Sometimes it's about doing something over again or rethinking something. And Venus is not only about money, but also about self-esteem. And so you may be even combining those two areas where you're thinking, am I asking for what I'm worth in my company? But something is going on in that third house where the retrograde begins. So I guess if you work in journalism, any kind of communications, teaching, and things like that, that will possibly be the area that is being looked at. But um, the other thing that I'm thinking is that it's possible that some people may be considering some kind of training that it's not necessarily you going to a university and getting a, a graduate degree or something like that. It could be just like a certificate, something that is probably not that long of an investment uh, in terms of time. But, you know, some certificates take quite a while. The point is that it might be an alternative to a university, and you may be doing this in order to make more money because you're kind of thinking about these uh, kinds of ways to do this. You may be assessing your money. And with uh, the sun in the second house, it's really front and center in your life at this point. So everything kind of is coming together in that regard. Another thing, too, is that if you have any kind of job career that is how you earn money online, you may be also considering, is this really something to continue with? Maybe you're on YouTube and you're asking yourself, am I really like going any place? I've been investing a lot of energy in this. Is it something I should keep investing energy into? I think of the seven of pentacles in the Tarot, where you're watching something grow. You're trying to see if it has the potential and you're having patience. But if you think about it this way, after a certain amount of time, you should have some kind of an idea. In other words, you don't want to just keep sinking time and money into trying to make something work and never seeing any signs that it is going to work or that it's going to um, start in a very humble way but grow because um, it is kind of like difficult when you're first um, starting a business to anticipate exactly how it's all going to play out. It does take time to even get going. And some people throw in the towel too soon, but some people don't see the writing on the wall either. And so you're going to be kind of looking at this in terms of turning a profit, or you may get money, as I said, coming back to you for something that you've done in the past. And maybe it does connect with the internet or teaching um, who knows, but th that's going to be at the very end of the month, we're going to start to see that possibly coming in for, for the vast majority of the month, Venus will be in that third house. 
And so you're, you're going to be considering the profitability, is that a word, of, you know, a teaching job or a training that you're undergoing, whether or not that really is going to make you enough money, or you're going to be investigating doing that in order to make more money or any other kind of like online venture that you have uh, sunk time and effort into. And um, so the, so Venus goes retrograde on the fifth in that third house. The other thing too about Venus retrograde, you could hear from somebody from your past and the third house is the house of your immediate area, your local area. So maybe you're dating one of your neighbors or people that somebody, maybe you met somebody very nearby and you broke it off and didn't hear from them or then they, they're resurfacing now. This could even be an online dating service that you belong to. Maybe you kind of lost track of somebody that you met through there and it's like, whoa, I haven't heard from this person in a minute. And it's almost like surprising, especially if you've stopped doing that type of dating. And it's like this person comes back into the picture. So um, on the 8th, we have a new moon in Libra. That's your second house, Virgo, again, with the earned income. New income streams, maybe planting seeds for that. I have a feeling that... The internet does play a role in this. Online, I mean. Online business. Etsy shop. YouTube channel. Blog. Vlogging. Anything along those lines. And Virgos love to communicate. You're ruled by Mercury. Maybe like a YouTube channel that's like a how-to. Because that tends to be something that Virgos excel in. As well as find value in for their own lives. So you may enjoy watching tutorials, but you also have the ability to give them. And this could be like kind of doing that in some way. Now, in terms of launching a business at this time, they say during a Venus retrograde that any endeavor involving money is something to watch out for. So a new business that you want to make a profit off of, you know, that might be something that would be challenged at this time until Venus goes direct on November 16th. But I only put this as one of the transits. I don't tell people, oh, yeah, if you if you launch a business during a Venus retrograde, it's sure to fail. I don't say that. I was thinking about this earlier today because... Gabriel Bernstein, who is somebody who um, created this, um, oh, she's written several books, but she, she, her latest um, book is called, was called uh, The Universe Has My Back. I think that was the latest one. But she also created these cards that were kind of like oracle cards uh, with that. You probably have heard of her. And uh, Spirit Chunky was the book that I read. I read, I've read a couple by her, but that was a really good book. And I was reading something about where she said that she doesn't even care about Mercury Retrograde. She launches things and she, she wasn't even paying attention to it. And I was thinking, wow, because she's kind of in that field. I thought for sure that she would observe these kinds of cosmic rules, but she doesn't. And I think that when you are in touch with your intuition to the highest degree, you do what is good for you. You don't listen to others. And again, I'm just putting out these transits because that's how I roll, but it doesn't mean that I want to encourage you to believe in these, you know, catastrophic possibilities, because I don't think they are. I think if anything, it might delay something where you expected to like, uh, if you launched and you didn't 
catch on right away. It could be that it's just something that has to catch up with itself, but uh, it doesn't mean that it's doomed. Let's put it that way. I think one of the most helpful aspects of predictive astrology is when you feel like you're trying to do things and you're being thwarted and you can look and see what kind of challenging transits there may be. And then you're like, Oh, wow. So I have, um, like when we had the Mars retrograde, Oh, so I have Mars retrograde in the sixth house of work. No wonder I've been feeling like I can't catch a break. And it's like, I try to do something to move forward and it's like there's a new obstacle that's being thrown in my path. And it kind of like when you when you can realize these things, it can help you to let go of resistance. And then that allows more beautiful things coming towards you. So it's really about the resistance is what the fear is. When people notice that things are slowing down for them, there tends to be this, you know, panic mode that ensues. And part of the panic is not knowing what's going on. If you, especially when you work for yourself, but it could apply too if you're looking for work. And it seems like all these doors are closing on you and you have no other prospects. You're like, what am I going to do? And you hear about some transits and you're like, okay. And that's enough to comfort you in that comfort makes you less controlling. And that is how you get the ball rolling. So that's happening. And the new moon in the second house can be a great time since Venus is um, set to go retrograde in this house. This is a great time for simply um, coming to, you know, gathering ideas for ways to make money, just in general. And hopefully at some point, you will be able to come up with more of the specifics. But the new moon period is a time for maybe that night or the next day, just taking some time out to really set your intentions for the next 30 days or, you know, even longer if that's applicable to your life. But the whole idea is being able to see the future in terms of ideas that you have and to kind of brainstorm about like, you know, what do I, what kind of income streams can I have based on where I am right now? I'm talking about realistic things. Because you don't want to, you know, the the second house is the house that Taurus rules. So you want to be grounded and you want to choose things that are easy, easier to obtain or obtain, I should say. Because otherwise, if you have these grandiose plans, um, it can make it very hard to actually realize your fantasy and it may not be all it's cracked up to be anyway. That's why it's always nice to stay grounded. And I, I know I don't have to tell Virgos to stay grounded, but um, coming up with goals that are the financial goals that can be realized within a shorter amount of time and that, um, that are doable. So there's that. And then on the ninth, Mercury goes from that sector. So, so Mercury has, uh, been in this third house I'm sorry, second house, and it goes into the third house. It's, it's been in in um, Libra, and it goes into Scorpio on the ninth. Oh, that's not right. 
Yes, actually, it is right. <laughs> I know. I, I said to myself, oh, I'm going to have to um, do this over again, but there's no way I'm going to do this over again after 15 minutes. And, you know, the thing is, Mercury starts the month in the second house of earned income. So that means that your mind really is on these income streams, creating new ones. And then it goes into your third house on the ninth of the month. So the significance of this Virgo is that you have Mercury in the same house as Venus retrograde, the third house. And again, there could be somebody that perhaps is even connected um, to a sibling, or maybe this is a sibling, where you have had this kind of maybe a truce with them, you're getting along with a sibling, and then all of a sudden, something gets turned upside down again. You may simply be saying, you know, is it even worth it to have this relationship? Maybe you don't feel honored in a relationship with a sibling or a cousin. I think the third house can also be about cousins. So um, that is happening. And Mercury is just your mental power going to this area. Mercury in the third is, Mercury rules the third house. So it's really great for some kind of studying or, you know, some kind of a course. I do believe some of you are, uh, maybe retaking a course, perhaps, um, that, or, or it could even be like, um, yeah, either retaking it or you have some requirements left in order to get that, that certificate and to be able to get your money's worth, you know, and I think of Venus, I think of getting your money's worth. And so, um, On the 23rd, the sun goes into Scorpio. I was just, the reason I was like pausing, I was like, there have to be more things happening than that. But this is actually kind of a quiet month in a lot of ways, except for the Venus retrograde. The sun goes into Scorpio on the 23rd, and Scorpio is a harmonious sign for you, Virgo, because Scorpio's uh, water and uh, it forms a sextile to you. And so this is a good time for you as the month winds down with um, the sun in the third house. So then this concentration of energy goes into that third house. If you're a writer, you know, I didn't mention that because um, there could be something along those lines. Maybe you're deciding, you know, do I value myself as a writer? Do I, it's like having the self-esteem to believe you're a writer. Some, there's cer certain professions that I feel like you have to have a certain amount of confidence because they're kind of outside the mainstream and being an author is one of them or any other type of artist, because if you're a wonderful, I don't know, accountant, <laughs> you might get, there might be certain types of jobs where there's a very clear cut route to getting professional accolades. But, you know, when you're doing something creative, it's not that simple. There are not the same kind of um, people out there who are looking at you, I guess there are, there are in, in the sense of like, you know, some kind of um, literary award or something like that, but just on a day-to-day -day basis, not for something major like that, you have to really believe in yourself, especially if you're an aspiring uh, author, because you may have to go through different drafts before you, you get to the, the draft that is the, the winner. I'm talking about in terms of other people wanting to read it. And sometimes even when you have something that's good, you, it may take a while for, for it to like catch on. So you have to believe in your project. And so that might be going through your head if you're in that situation. And then on the 24th, 
There's a full moon in Taurus, and that's your ninth house of the higher mind. So yeah, maybe there is something with university. Maybe you are finishing a degree and you had to do some kind of, um, yeah, like the, th the third house, maybe that was like student teaching or something, some kind of an apprenticeship where you, or like a, an internship where you had to like, um, do something as practice in order to get that ultimate degree. The ninth house is like, you know, university level learning or teaching. It could be teaching. So academia, it can be travel. So if you have been overseas, maybe you're ending your trip or if you've been planning for a trip, whether it's for business or pleasure and it's a long distance, maybe everything is coming to culmination and you're about to embark upon it even though this is a full moon it could be like you're getting all your preparations ready this could even be an internal thing where you're coming to some realization about your own philosophy in life and how you view certain events in your life full moons can bring things into awareness and and, and the ninth house is your your philosophy or it's the God house, so it can directly relate to some kind of a spiritual idea. And on Halloween, the 31st, we have two transits, one being Mercury going into Sagittarius, so Mercury going into that fourth house of home and family, and Venus retrograding back into the second house. So there might be something with the siblings, and now the, the fourth house is the mother, and also the the family of origin, if you want to get more general about it. There might be something going on that is connected to your um, family of origin. And that's why you've been dealing with siblings and now you're dealing with uh, the mother. And maybe this is about some money that was supposed to be uh, split between the siblings. And there's problems with that. Maybe um, people have been taking sides in the family and now it's like, you know, well, you know, at, so at certain times you're in alignment with one member and then you break up with them and then you're with somebody else. So there's always like these factions. This could even have something to do with a house. That was the other thing too, because the fourth house can be about real estate and Mercury can be contracts. So perhaps when Mercury was in the third house, you were researching different neighborhoods that you wanted to live in, like local areas, and kind of getting a feel for it. And maybe you made your pick. And Venus, meanwhile, is back in that second house. So perhaps there's been some kind of like, I don't know if I like, I don't think, uh, you know, like when Venus is in the retrograding in the third house, it's like the bloom is off the rose or you use, you, you know, they say, don't do anything, make a choice. Like, you know, uh, I was gonna say elective surgery, but actually a cosmetic surgery that has to do, you know, with, um, changing something or even getting a certain haircut because you might think it looks good. And then when Venus goes direct, you think it looks hideous. I don't know if it's that much of an influence, but I do feel like perhaps I think it's more to me, Venus retrograde is more like having some kind of, um, a blessing come back to you. It's like, it's like Jupiter retrograde where you get a second chance for something that you missed out on the first time. And perhaps it's a great deal on, on, well, actually it would be, it, it would have to be more related to a particular area that you wanted to live in. But then now that Venus retrogrades back into that second house, it all comes back to your own self-esteem because that's what the second house also represents. Not only your material possessions and the money that you make, but how you feel about yourself. And you may be kind of like challenging your assumptions. Maybe you 
feel like you want to live in a certain community because it's very affluent or you're looking down on a certain area because you think it's more of a working class environment or maybe even this kind of a, a plain looking area. It's not, it's not that beautiful, but there's a really great deal to be had in this area. In other words, there's some kind of like property and, and things like that, but you're, maybe you're being a little bit snobbish and you're questioning that. And when I, you know, Virgos aren't really snobbish, but Everybody has the ability, especially since Virgo is a perfectionist, you may see like one little flaw about this situation that makes you want to reject it out of hand. Like if, if this is like a, um, a house, a property, and it may be this really amazing deal and you're just like fixated on the one thing that you find to be a negative and it might be like the way it looks, but it could even be like where it's located. So that might be all going on in your head. With Mercury in the fourth house, you really have your mind on things related to real estate or your family of origin too. That could be that. So I'm going to leave it there, Virgo. It looks very interesting for you. Definitely a money month. So I hope that you enjoyed this. And if you'd like to get a more personalized version of this, because this, after all, is for everybody who happens to be uh, either Virgo sun or Virgo rising and your exact time of birth changes things up totally. And some of these things may be a bit... Um, you know, they may go along with um, what what your houses look like, but it may not be the whole thing. So it is possible to have some of them apply and some of them not apply. And the bottom line is that when you, when you see your natal chart, if you're watching this or actually listening to it and your son is in Virgo, your rising sign can be anything. So you know, the, the the chart is constructed on the basis of the rising sign. And so you're, you know, all these transits like the Venus retrograde, it could be in a totally different house than when I, what I said. And the natal chart is what is used for the, the mundane predictions because it's like the day-to-day -day pro predictions based upon your time of birth, which kind of set everything in motion. So um, I'll, provide a link to the two types of nail chart readings that I do. One is with the interpretation of your planets and houses, and both of them are involved with the, tre the astrological trends for the coming year and kind of like making it more of a, a broadened thing rather than the day-to-day -day minutia, more of the impactful stuff. And so anyway, I hope you have an awesome October, Virgo. Bye.